essences is the first thing we're gonna talk about. I have two sets of essences that I'm currently using. I haven't been able to try everything at rank three because I don't have it yet, but I think these are two very solid builds. I have one offensive build and one defensive build. This is the offensive build where I'm running Crucible of Flame, which is the highest damage essence. And then I have Conflict as Miner, which is also really, really good uh, because it gives you versatility. And versatility is also damage because versatility actually affects trinkets like for example, this music box, the more versatility you have, the more your trinkets will do in damage. You can check this by just mousing over, taking off some versatility, and you see the numbers on trinkets, they decrease and increase depending on your versatility. A lot of people don't know that or don't think about it. But yeah, versatility is a super, super nice stat. And then the second, the second setup I have is a, the tanky one. This is my defensive build where I go uh, conflict as major which makes it so you have more versatility and stuff in stuns, makes you very tanky in stuns as well. It's just the most tanky trait overall. And I've been playing a lot with uh, Life Binder as my miner. Uh, I think this is a pretty undervalued trait. I th whenever you look at your healing done, it's, it's usually really high, but at least 5%, sometimes up to almost 10% of your healing is what I'm seeing, between five and 10% which is really really good so when i were gonna go full tank spec i i use these two and i i really feel the difference because i will also spec defensively so that's the main two essence swaps i make currently and uh they both feel really good but i would say in most games i go tanky now because it feels stronger and more reliable but the more the more offensive one is more fun to play with for sure next thing talents This is the standard talents you'll go. I don't think it's worth talking about all of these talent trees. I think I'll only talk about the ones you change. So you pretty much always play, play uh, prosperity. So I won't go too much into that for PVP. This talent tree right here, number two, Tiger Dash, Renewal and Wild Charge. You almost always go Wild Charge. I would say in 2v2, I pretty much never spec out of this. Sometimes in threes, I might go renewal if I really don't need the mobility and I want I want another oh shit button. For example, I can see me maybe wanting to try this against a heavy setup comp like Rogue Mage and you just don't seem to be able to deal with their ghost. Maybe I'll try renewal some game, see if it feels good. But most of the time you wanna go wild charge because you can use this in a lot of ways defensively and offensively. Next talent tree is Balance Affinity, Feral Affinity and Guardian Affinity. So here there's a lot of things you can do. Balance Affinity actually does have a use in Arena, but not in twos. This will be something you purely use in threes uh, for the increased range on your on all your abilities. That also means your Cyclone. So if there is a setup where you pretty much are never the target or you know that you can't really die in your comp against another comp, Balance Affinity is very, very nice. Just so you have increased range, you can sit further in the back and you can also go Moonkin form. For example, against mage teams, it's nice. You can sit in Moonkin form and uh, you can still cast some abilities like uh, Regrowth and damage abilities and Cyclone and you'll be immune to Polymorph the whole time. So you can still cast stuff and heal stuff uh, while being immune to Polymorph. So against a lot of mage teams, if you're not scared of dying, Balance Affinity is very nice. And then you have Feral Affinity, which is... In, if you use this in 3v3, I mean, it does give you movement speed, which is nice, but if you're getting... If you're the one dying, you usually want to go Guardian Affinity, but if you if you feel like you won't die versus that comp or they won't go on you a lot, you can go Feral Affinity. And what's nice about Feral Affinity is mainly that your Rake, you learn Rake and then you can go Cat Form. And you when you get a Restuff, you can stun them with your Rake. Because when you use Rake from Stuff, it's a, it's a stun. And that's very big because then you can stun into Clone or stun to help kill. So the main thing is the movement speed and the abilities you get. In 2v2, I play this a lot because you you don't you can't get punished as hard in 2v2, so you can play really aggressive, do a lot of damage, get a lot of stuns off, and you also have more movement speed to kite. In 3v3, you will mainly go Guardian Affinity and play more passive, and maybe go for Cyclones and stuff, but you won't rush in as much, depending on your comp and matchup and everything. But most of the time in 3v3, you're gonna go Guardian Affinity. Most of the time in 2v2, you're Feral Affinity, but Guardian Affinity very often as well in twos. So mainly these two, sometimes balance affinity. So Garden Affinity does change your playstyle quite a bit. 
It reduces all damage you take by 6% just all, all over, but it also gives you the ability you care the most about here is Frenzied Regeneration. It's a huge heal they use in bear form, and you also become, you know, you have the passive damage reduction, and uh, so you just become more tanky, and Frenzied Regen doesn't cost any mana, so it's very efficient heal. You always want to press it whenever you're taking damage. Bear form also gives you a ton of stamina and armor, so you become way more tanky. If there's like a rogue trying to kidney shot you to kill you, if you manage to pre-bear, you will that will probably save you cooldowns or save your life because you're going to take so much less damage. And then as soon as you come out of the stun, you just press Frenzied Regen and you run around like this. And that'll heal you for a shit ton. So this makes you way more tanky. It's a way more reliable spec and you'll play this very often if you're scared of dying to anything. Next talents is... Basically, it's between Mighty Bash and Entanglement. I don't think Typhoon is pretty much ever good. Uh, you almost always go Mighty Bash. Stuns are the best CC in this game by far. Nothing as good as stuns. You know, it's very rare you don't want to play with Bash unless you're in threes. Probably if you play with something that already has a million stuns and you barely can get use out of your Bash, maybe you go Bash. Uh, I, I don't know. Most of the time you go Bash. So, Mass Entanglement is something I actually use in twos quite a lot. And I, I can see it's having its use in threes. So, for example, one thing I'll do that I, I think is good. I've been playing this against Demon Hunters, for example. I'll go Feral Affinity, Mass Entanglement, and then maybe even Entangle Bark. And then Demon Hunters, what they do to you in 2v2, they just run after you and they stun you into Mono Burn, right? So, I drag them behind the pillar and then I just root them and I run away. So I just, and then also when I iron bark, that will root them as well. So I'll be able to just like CC them way more. But uh, I'm starting to think that bash with entangling is better. Uh, also mass entanglement can be pretty good against DKs. You can just root all the pets and run away. But overall you want to go bash. Sometimes entanglement can have its uses, but bash overall. Next one is solar forest every single time. If you go tree form, it's a, it's as bad as backpedaling. It's, it's not good. Cultivation, this is, no, you just go solar forest. This talent right here is probably one of the main reasons why Rested Druids are considered kind of overpowered. Or it's one of the main reasons Druid are as good as they are. You really should understand exactly how this talent works because it's such a big deal uh, that, that you use it correctly. So basically what it does is every time you press Swiftman, you get a buff that I have showing right here. And this buff will increase regrowth or your rejuvenation heal by a shit ton. And the biggest, the biggest way to use it is with regrowth. Like I get this buff and then I regrowth, and this regrowth will heal for a million. But you often use it on your reju as well, depending on the situation. If they're basically, a general rule would be if uh, your partner is really high on health, you'll just give him the reju. But if he's like 70%, 80%, maybe even, he's about to take some damage, you just always want to regrowth. Um, and you also want to make sure you have as many hots up as possible before you swift mend. Because if you read your mastery, the more uh, hots you have up, the more you will heal. So it's actually really important to not just swift mend air, because then that swift mend won't heal too much. So you want to try and get like get some hots up, and then the swift mend you do now will do way more. And this regrowth that comes will do way more as well. And then next one, you go stone bark. Uh, almost every game there is. There is times where you can play with Spring Blossoms in PvP, actually. Uh, something I can think of is if, for example, you're playing with a Destro Warlock, someone that stands still the whole game. The Destro Warlocks, they kind of just stand still in in one location throughout most of the game, and then you can go Spring Blossom and just put a Shroom on them. If they're taking consistent damage, it'll be good. But uh, most games, almost every game, you want to go Stone Bark. It's a very, very, very good uh, talent. When you go Spring Blossoms, I've seen some people mess around with Photosynthesis. I know it's good in PvE. Personally, I don't like it. I've tried it out a little bit. I think it's awful. You go, I go Germination pretty much every single game. It's really, really good in PvP because it also gives you um, an extra hot, which is extra healing from Mastery, which means more bursty healing, which is really important. And then PvP talents. Trinket, Adapt, Relentless, Situational, what you play with. Uh, most of the time you go Trinket. But then there is comps where you could go Adaptation, for example, maybe against a Warrior, because then you'll Adapt every single fear. Uh, I don't know, I can't, there, there might be some comps, I'm not, I can't think about it right now. I, 
I very, very rarely go adaptation. It'll be some comp where I know the only CC they have. Like, for, for example, against a monk, it could be good because you'll adapt every leg sweep. And then the other, only other thing they have is paralyzed, right? But it'll depend on their partner. And it's a little bit scary to play with because uh, most classes can punish you for playing adapt. They'll, they'll try and get your adapt with some CC when they're not doing anything and they'll pop everything next time because they know they get your trinket for free. So most of the time adapt is bad, but there is some situations where it's pretty decent. Uh, Relentless, I spec against Demon Hunters every time because it's harder for them to land mana burns then. Uh, they can't land a mana burn without their I-Beam haste buff if you play Rally, so it's pretty nice to play Rally. Also, they have a lot of CC in general, so it's just nice to shorten it all. And Trinket, but Trinket is the main thing. And also against Destro Warlocks, I'll pretty much always go Relentless because there's so much micro CC and it really cuts down throughout a long game it'll, it'll be very very nice shadow priests i always very very often go relentless as well because they have a lot of insta cc you can't avoid so it just feels really good to play with it pvp talents this changes a lot here's where it's super super situational what you do uh let me get to an in here so i can change them around so the default spec will be overgrowth Clone and Master Shapeshifter in twos if you're going aggressive. So I'm playing the aggressive build right now, right? That's Crucible with Conflict that I showed you guys earlier. And then this will be my standard build. I really like Overgrowth because it allows you to play more aggressive. Very often when my partner is taking some damage and I'm in cat form doing damage. This is, I'm talking about 2v2 perspective now, right? When I'm going aggressive. I'll do damage and stuff and then I'll just chuck him one Overgrowth and then go back in cat form. So it allows you to spend less globals hotting someone up and you can just you can use it offensively and it's kind of like an oh shit button as well because when you overgrowth into Swiftman, the Swiftman will heal a ton because of all the hots that are applied. So it's a very good defensive usage too. Cyclone, this is also situational when I play with Cyclone. Um, often when I play aggressive specs, I go Cyclone. But it depends what class I'm playing with. I, I will say I, I play with Cyclone most games. But then, for example, if I'm playing with Demon Hunters, I'll go full tank spec and I'll just drop Cyclone. I'll go like increased life bloom uh, and increased region and all that. I'll talk about that in a bit. And then Master Shapeshifter is huge for 2v2. It increases your cat damage by 25%. So it's very, very nice. It's also... It increases all damage by 25%, right? So if I put Moonfire and Sunfire up and then I go cat form... Uh, the Moonfire and Sunfire will start ticking harder as soon as I'm in cat form and as soon as I cancel cat, cat form They'll go back to ticking normal So you want to try and take advantage of that and keep that in mind as much as you can a lot of people don't realize that I think But you won't always be able to play this offensive spec It depends a lot what you're facing and what you're playing with for example If I'm playing with a demon hunter, which I've been doing quite a lot lately. I want to go full defensive spec because I know uh that we are probably the team to to oom them first if i just live and play it safe because of mono burn right so if i'm playing with a demon hunter i'll go tank traits i just click this macro which is versatility more versatility and more healing here the most tanky traits and since you go conflict you also get the pp talent overgrowth by default so that means i get an extra pp talent so i'll go focused growth and then i'll go revitalize i'll skip the clone and then I'll go probably Thorns for the last one. Thorns does cost a lot of mana, but you can use it defensively as well. When someone's on you, you just Thorns them, and then uh, the enemy will often go off them because they take too much damage from it. Or you can use it offensively too, because you know they're going to hit into it and it'll do a ton of damage. Thorns is very, very good, but it does cost a lot of mana. You want to make sure you... Uh, you know, for example, when you're innovating, you always want to try and press this because it's just so much mana. Depends on the situation, though, of course. So this will be my most tanky build that I've been playing a lot with lately. Uh, where I just... The, the difference is actually enormous on how, how tanky you become when you play this spec. You just uh, try to... You get hots up and you try to abuse bear form as much as possible and use your fancied regen. So with Demon Hunter, I'll play this very, very often. But you can also, if you want to, you can swap out Focus Grow for Revitalize with Clone if you feel like you want to play with Clone for whatever reason. Um, if I feel like th the enemy team is gonna train just one target Most of the time I'll go focus growth, but if I feel like they make a lot of swaps Then I'll prioritize revitalize. That's basically how I look at it. They're pretty equal those two not much of a difference nourish I'll also play with sometimes 
basically I'll play with Nourish when I feel like they're gonna do so much damage that I can't heal at one point. I can think of an example is if I am playing with a Death Knight and we are versus a Windwalker in 2v2, then I know that at some point in the game I won't be able to out heal the pressure my DK is taking. When dampening gets high enough, I just can't heal it, so I need Nourish. Nourish will be the highest HPS you can do. If you get to spam Nourish over and over and over with full hots, they uh, it, it will crit every time and it'll be insane HPS. It costs a lot of mana, but uh, sometimes it's the only way to keep up. Nothing can really die when you're spamming Nourish like this in the background. So that's one of the examples, but I don't play with Nourish very often. And then Mark of the Wild can be good against... It's, it only works against Dot, so Moonkins for example, Nature, Fire, Frost, and Arcane Dots. I pretty much only use this against Moonkins. Moonkins this is very nice. It doesn't cost a lot of money, it's only 1k mana, so it's worth rebuffing. When people purge it, you can rebuff it easily. It's worth it, for sure. And then Disentanglement, I mean, it costs so much mana to put your Shroom down, so you're not gonna sit there and spam Shrooms over and over. You could consider this if you're in a situation where your team is really struggling with uptime and you feel like, you know, you could try it out, maybe there is a matchup where it could be nice. But uh, it's so much mana to reapply your, your thing, so. That, that's basically the talents you use. You don't use Deep Roots ever, or I don't at least. Uh, I don't use Enroaching Vines ever. I don't use Early Spring ever. So the talents I've gone through are the talents I, I use. So next thing is gear. You can try hard a lot with your gear. I am a little bit lazy with it because I've been playing so many different classes, but I do have two different gear sets. It's basically, I have three actually, but I mainly use two of them. It's my normal set where I go music box, which is extremely strong, by the way. It does a lot of damage and a lot of healing. I haven't tried it with the ring bonus, but I think it's worth it if you have both. So I play with Maledic and music box. But if your teammate doesn't have a Maledic, if you have another good trinket, it'll probably be better to use that. Uh, the pocket size is good or any versatility trinket is good. Uh, you can also play with Safeguard. Safeguard is decent, but in 2v2 it has less value than 3v3. I also recently got nerfed. If you look at Safeguard, it is now a 3 minute cooldown instead of 2. But also in 2v2 there is more dampening and the absorb is affected by dampening, so it's less valuable in, in 2v2 compared to 3v3. Also depends if you think it's even gonna proc if people are gonna go on you a lot. But Safeguard is definitely a sick trinket. And in 3v3 I'd use it almost always. Because uh, it'll be more bursty in 3v3 and you get more value out of it more easily. And then I have my tank spec, which is Safeguard and Maldic again. Same thing. Uh, I'll often go this when I play with uh, the essences I talked about earlier, which is Conflict with the life binder and then I go tank gear and then I go tank talents like this with garden affinity and this this setup with with these essences and this gear is it makes you extremely tanky so that's basically the things I changed I also changed my legs so I have a damage build where I go full out damage and then I have the Nimbus Bolts. You can get them from the old raid, Crucible of Storms. They are still pretty overpowered. The proc you get, Nimbus Bolt it's called, it hits a little bit too hard. They're very, you know, it's Mastery is a good stat for you, but they're very low item levels. So you lose a lot of steps, stats from playing them. But they definitely, in 2v2, if you're going fully aggressive uh, with Cat Farm Spec, I think you, if you have the Nimbus Bolt, you should use them. Because uh, the proc is definitely overpowered. And if you play Demon Hunter or something, you get these legs, it's definitely really, really overpowered. If you have a mythic, mythic legs of this and you're a demon hunter, that's definitely one of the broken items that people don't talk about enough. Next thing is standard rotation. I'm gonna talk about the standard way of healing. So before I do that, I wanna go over a few things that I think is really important when you're new to Druid or if you just wanna make sure you know how the class works. I mentioned it briefly before, but Soul of the Forest is so important to understand how it works properly. Um, you don't want to throw out your Swift Mens randomly, and you always want to make sure you use this buff, Soul of the Forest, properly. It is so, so important. 
to use this properly. If you don't, like, you're just... It, it's the biggest deal ever to understand this. So when you open up, a lot of people are probably wondering if you should use Riju or Bloom first. And I usually start with a Riju into Bloom. I don't think it's a big deal. The only difference, the only real difference, for example, say uh, Mumon is my partner and he's at 29% right now and I know a Shaman is spam purging every hot, I will Life Bloom instead. Because when someone purge your Life Bloom, it will deal, it will expire and it will like bloom as soon as it purged. So you want to get your bloom up first and then reju. But normally I go for the rejuice first. But it's not a big deal how you do that. You just want to get your hots up. It's not a, it's not a huge deal. So what you want to do is you want to get your three hots up, right? Get three hots up. And then the next thing you want to do, what a lot of people do wrong is that they sit there and they spang regrowth. Regrowth doesn't heal for shit. Okay, it's a dog shit heal unless you have Soul of the Forest. It's very rare you sit there and you cast Regroves without Soul of the Forest. It heals for absolute, it's so mana inefficient. If you're in a situation where you have to spam Regroves to top someone, you're gonna oom so fast. And it's not very good healing at all. That's why it's very important how you use your Swiftmans, even them out and, and use them properly when they're doing damage instead of just pressing them mindlessly, right? But you also don't wanna to be too greedy because it's not a super long cooldown. You just have to be smart about it. When you play a lot, you get more of a feel for it. But uh, basically, uh, when you Swiftman someone, you want to already have hots up because of how your mastery works. So your healing is increased for, e for each of your hots. So every hot increases my healing by everything. So now I have three hots up, then this Swiftman will heal uh, way more because of my mastery. Three hots, Swiftman, and now I get Grove Tending as well, and then this Regrowth will heal for a shit ton. That's the big heal. That's what's overpowered about Druid, that heal right there, right? That's a really good heal. So you always want to try and have Hots up. In some situations, of course, someone is so low on health or you don't have time to hot them up, so you have to just go for the Swiftman into Regrowth right away. It it'll depend on the situation, of course. But you always want to try and have Hots up, Swiftman, and then do a Regrowth if, they're, if they need a big heal. If they're pretty topped up and it's looking fine, uh, if they're like 80, 90% and they're not taking a bunch of damage, just use this Soul of the Forest on a, on a Reju. That's fine too. Or if there's too many things to fake cast and you don't have time to fake cast, just go for the Reju, of course. Just get your hots rolling and uh, your Swiftman's out. Because your Swiftman actually heals a ton in itself as long as you have hots up. And then your Swiftman, it'll heal a lot. So often I'll, I'll just get my hots up, Swiftman, and then Reju. And then Swiftman again and Reju. And now both those Rejus are really powerful. And you want to try and not press Reju again. Because if you do, it'll cancel out the powerful Reju and give you a weak one. So you got to think a little bit about if you use Solar Force or not. Because the Reju with Solar Force will heal a shit ton more. That's like the most basic thing, I think, with healing as a Druid. 